So there was this family, they had three, three children. This mother had three children and they already grew up and they were very wealthy. They were doing really good and they decided to bless their mother just to give her something, you know, to remember. And so the first one bought her a really, really big house. The second one bought her a really nice car. And the third one decided to, knowing that his mother uh, liked to read the Bible but was already of old age, decided to buy her a parrot that would read the Bible for her. And so after some time, uh, the mother sent a letter to all of her three, three sons and she said that to the first one, she says, thank you for your gift but the house is too big. She writes to the second son and says, thank you for your awesome gift but your car is too small. And then she writes to the youngest one and she said, you know, your, your gift was the best. Uh, she said, the chicken tasted really good. <laughs> Don't give your mama parrots. If she doesn't like animals, some of you will get it. It's like, oh, you'll get it tomorrow. It's okay. <laughs> I want to speak to you briefly about accursed things. Accursed things. As we see in our church when we pray with the anointing water and we learn a lot that, that the power of God, God expresses himself through many mediums. People many times get uh, confused uh, who say things like why do you pray with anointing water why you don't pray with anointing oil and all this stuff but they don't understand the anointing of God in the Bible we see many times God used different mediums to express himself like the rod of Moses like the shadow of Peter the clothes of Jesus the saliva of Jesus the pool of Bethesda um, the other lakes the waters and the anointing oil that shows to us all of these things that God can use any medium to express himself just like electricity like the power of electricity travels to copper wires the God's power can flow through people but not only through people it can flow through other things if you take notes I want you to write down four things that the power can flow through not only God's power but also the power of the enemy the first one is people we see that when people touch Jesus they were healed and Jesus says power left me God's power can flow through people but the power of demons and Satan can also flow through people. There are people who have so much demons in them that when you come in contact you will be affected. Also God's power and the power of the devil can flow through animals or through places. I'm sorry first one or second one will be places. Places we see like cities like Sodom and Gomorrah. We see cities that Jesus condoned. He says that the, my power has been manifested in the city but you guys have not repented. We see for example a city like Jericho in a negative contact. When this Jericho was defeated Joshua pronounced the curse and he said whoever is going to build this city his firstborn and then uh, he uh, pronounced the curse on his other child that will be affected. There are places that have power connected to them. That's why Jerusalem was the place Jesus told people to, to wait for him. God told the temple was the place for people to go to worship. We know now God lives within us but there are still places that have more power of God or more power of the devil in them. If you read in Tri Cities there's about 10 haunted places. One of the top places in Tri Cities that gets haunted and this is not a Christian newspaper that writes that. It's a, it's a secular newspaper that writes that is actually a baby cemetery where stuff happens and they begin to describe of things that begin to happen that you can actually go now and, and check that out. I highly discourage you to do that. Just come to our prayer line. <laughs> they, the movies that are based on haunted houses or haunted things, all of these things, they're not just the imagination of somebody who's bored in the basement of their house trying to make a buck. There's a lot of true stories. Most of the haunted places or places where stuff happens usually it's because of suicide, murder or some kind of a death or abuse. Almost all, even I did a lot of searching today, a lot of the places where people were completely just, just killed and cut into pieces or the whole family was killed and now in those places hundreds of years later, weird paranormal activity that happens. I know a particular uh, story even in Tri-Cities where in one particular house in the room a man committed suicide. Every family that has moved into that house since Three or four of them has been divorced. And so because a certain spirit that lives there, that's why when you move into a new place, you always want to dedicate that place. You want to get together with your family, join hands and simply say, we're paying the bills, all the demons out. 
because the devil's not paying the bill so he has no place to stay there but if you don't kick him out he's gonna stick around same thing you want to do with your car same thing where you want to do with places that you are in you want to dedicate them dedicate them to God and you simply begin to proclaim and confess good things to happen in those places because somebody say amen because the power flows through places the third thing that the power flows through is animals now we all know that the demons can use animals okay wrong place to say that amen in the Bible we see that when demons left a particular man that they entered into pigs and the pigs violently ran so demons can actually could enter into animals now this does not mean when an animal misbehaves an animal is an animal okay it's not your child if your child mis misbehaves doesn't mean they always have a demon so when an animal acts like an animal that doesn't mean that the animal has a demon but we must understand that the demons can inhabit animals also even God can use animals how did God get ravens who do not share their food even with their young to share meat with prophet Elijah how did God let Jesus ride a donkey that nobody has ever ridden if you ever want to get you know you always want to get on a new car you never want to get on a new horse or a donkey <laughs> nobody has ever ridden that is not a good thing that's like a suicide watch getting Jesus is getting on a donkey nobody else has ever ridden that is actually very very dangerous and that donkey didn't flip him out that did donkey didn't drop him that shows the fact that there's power of God that affects even animals the fact that a donkey could speak to a prophet and instruct a prophet tells us that the power of God can flow also through the animals I know some are like whoa you're gonna go to your dog say hey let me test your power <laughs> don't do that it's gonna bite you and fourth one is objects it's when God told uh, people in Deuteronomy he says that I don't want you to bring certain objects don't bring anything abominable into my house or into your house because you're gonna become like those objects you're gonna be doomed and so there are objects that even we see in the Bible like rod of Moses this is a simple rod that's a shepherd's rod he's shepherding people with it and God says Moses what do you have he says I have a rod God says drop it Moses drops the rod and if you watch Bible very carefully you will see that ever since Moses dropped the rod it was no longer referred to as the rod of Moses it was referred as to the rod of God and then God instead of doing miracle on his own he actually told Moses take the rod he said well God why couldn't you just split the Red Sea God said you lift the rod God says take the rod hit the rock take the rod and do this with the rod do that and that why because then the, the rod became the object God used the rod is not to be worshipped we don't see nobody walking around today worshiping a rod but in that moment God used the rod to accomplish his purposes can somebody say amen same thing happens people who walk around and say that demonic things objects paintings you know certain voodoo dolls and souvenirs and charms and these things are simply innocent or you know witchcraft books white magic black magic you know Ouija boards and all other things dream catchers all of these things horoscopes they're nothing they're just innocent they're just poetry they're just art listen these things if in the spiritual in the godly things we see that God's spirit can use things we also know that the demons can use things and when we are oblivious and blind buried our head into the sand acting like the world is not spiritual we bring these things into our life we can come into danger where our life can have certain consequences we don't know where they're coming from amen just like what we, we heard today from Ariselli. I remember it like yesterday when she didn't mention some of the details of her story is when we prayed for her on Sunday after the service Ariselli would cry uncontrollably and so we would pray for her she would vomit a lot of blood I have a picture actually she doesn't know we have a picture didn't want to post it up to surprise you because you will lose your whole story a lot of like nasty stuff when that stuff was happening I had my I only had my phone on and and I turn around because if I keep watching I'm like I'm gonna join her <laughs> in that bucket very nasty things would happen and so she's like she's like I feel so much better I'm like you better feel better after all of this because you threw a lot of stuff over there she goes back home and next day she begins to call and says I feel exactly the same thing and I was like you gotta be kidding me really you got more stuff we would go into her house and I'm not kidding you we're walking in and she's sitting in the toilet like this on her knees crying and vomiting stuff again and again and again and so we walk around the house uncontrollably crying not being able to work not being able to literally just at the end of her life and so we're beginning to pray for her we're beginning to pray around the house and I walk in and I see this piece of paper over the door and I saw word demonio or demonio or something in Spanish how do you say demon in Spanish demonio yeah 
I know half of word demon the moment I saw demon the that gave me enough and I was like what is this he's like well some some kind of a grandma from Mexico gave me this to you know protect the house from bad spirits anytime anything you bring into the house from some kind of a grandma <laughs> God bless the grandmas okay especially a lot of stuff and a lot of Catholicism in Mexico and I speak this with very respect to Catholicism a lot of Catholicism especially in a lot of the villages they mix with a cult same thing as orthodox in Ukraine they mix a lot of this stuff with Christianity new age and a lot of other God forgive me crap combine it all together and they put it under the banner of keeping the good spirits the bad spirits same thing with Native Americans when they you know build that little uh, dream catcher to put in to catch the bad spirits and to catch the bad dreams and to let the good dreams come into your life and people buy that simply saying well there's no big deal about it but this, this is what happened when we removed that thing and she removed a few other idols on her own hands her face started to change and she stopped crying stopped puking, stopped throwing up, went back to work and things started to get back to normal and this is just one out of many examples that when you allow certain objects that have been dedicated to devil and demons and satan listen they have a potential of harming your life in the ways you cannot imagine amen now that I said my introduction let me read the scripture and mention to you the conclusion amen if you have your bible let's go to Joshua chapter 7 verse 11 7 11 Joshua so when this story, the background of this story is Israel got into the promised land and the first city that they were entering in was Jericho. And God said to Israel, I don't want you to take anything out of Jericho. All of those things are accursed. All of those things are under a curse. The good stuff, gold, silver and all other things, I want you to bring it to my house, the temple, the, the tabernacle. The bad things, all the other things, I want you to completely destroy them because they are accursed. It means they are under a curse. Now there was this smarty pants guy, his name was Aiken. He's like, man, we're not gonna waste that. He found this beautiful clothes and he's like, I'm gonna take that on and I'm gonna hide it. And so he didn't think there was anything wrong with taking any things that were accursed. He brought it into his tent, he hid it into his tent and everything seemed fine. Until next time they're going to another city, smaller city, some 10-15 miles away from Jericho. As they're going into that city to conquer that city, they take less soldiers into that city. And as they're going into that city, they get attacked so bad that Israel loses 36 people. Now 36 people is not a lot until one of the 36 is your father. 36 is not a lot until one of the six is your son. 36 we just had you know a few so a few our policemen that they were you know they were killed um, in the protest and you know a whole nation is gathering together to mourn and to grieve 36 men who were outstanding soldiers lost their lives this was a huge hit Israel loses a momentum Israel loses 36 men and Israel gets fear until then everyone had fear of Israel now Israel has a fear of everyone else and Joshua rips his clothes gets before God and says God what's going on where are you? Why are you not helping us out? Well, you're not helping us to win the battle you promised to us and God comes to Josh and says relax. He said get up on your feet. Israel has sinned. Now what sin is to miss the mark. It's very simple to miss the mark. So in the original language they didn't use word sin in a religious context. The word sin was used if you missed your flight you would say I sent my flight. If you go playing basketball, so instead of saying you missed a shot, you can say I sent my shot. So start using that. Go on the court and you know, and if you missed you know something, say I just, I sent the shot. They're like, whoa, you're deep. You're like, I know. Learned it in a hungry generation. So sin is to miss the mark. God says Israel has missed the mark. It means I set a standard, you guys missed it. And then he says they have also transgressed my covenant. Now the difference between sin and transgressed is transgressed is crossing the line while sin is missing the mark. Transgressed is cross, uh, crossing the line and it's interesting how it says transgressed my covenant. See every relationship like a covenant relationship if you're in marriage there are standards and there are boundaries. For example, you're expecting a husband to do certain things in the house and you're also expecting your house, you're expecting your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you have certain boundaries, meaning that chica, you and her have nothing going on. There's boundaries. Now if you don't take the garbage out, that's called sin, you missed the mark. 
but if she finds someone else's text message on your phone that's called transgression you crossed the line did you get it so God says you transgressed my commandment means you crossed the line just I think yesterday a lady was taking a picture with a group of her friends in the Kenyan um, Grand Canyon um, and so she came to the really really edge you know and, and there's a line there by which they say not to cross but see we're smarties we like to push the line we want to see how far we can go without actually falling and the saddest part is that the moment they took the picture she slid off and fell and died transgressed she transgressed the line God says to Israel you guys not only missed my mark you didn't take the garbage out you guys actually crossed the line you brought something of the devil you you start cheating with the you you start you almost like you're cheating on me you 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 went out with someone else and God says that that's crossing the line and that's not cool and God says then they have even taken some of the accursed things so God says not only you missed the mark not only you crossed the line but God says you brought some of the accursed things in your midst means you brought that stuff into your midst how many of you uh, ever seen cockroaches roaches okay how many of you you have cockroaches in your house <laughs> nobody okay oh okay so if somebody if you saw somebody raising their hand that's the house you don't want to go to <laughs> how many of you ever been to a place that has cockroaches <laughs> okay if you ever go to a place that has cockroaches it's bad but the worst part is when you load your clothes and you bring some of the cockroaches back to your house and then the same thing that was there begins to multiply in your house and that's exactly what happened to Israel God is saying that Jericho was doing bad Jericho was destroyed because he was doing bad but he says you brought those roaches back to your own land guys one of the things that we have to watch for and I already mentioned that and I'm gonna repeat it again is that the things that we bring into our lives that are accursed now let me mention something on the side if you ever been into a relationship and you broke up from that relationship and that relationship has no hope means you're done and you don't want ever that relationship to continue it's very important to understand a lot of times people bring accursed things that were good things in a relationship but when relationship ends those good things like souvenirs gifts pictures um, necklaces uh, scarves clothes uh, different things that you share together those things actually begin to trouble your current relationship I cannot tell you how many relationships would suffer in the beginning because one person was not disconnected in their soul from their ex and partially why is because the artifacts that they had or pictures numbers connections they still maintained in their life that they had in their past you gotta walk away from that stuff and you gotta throw that stuff out because if you don't that means you're telling to the devil that listen in case this little fling that I have is not working out I have a plan B and the devil will always use that you want to always burn things delete the number throw away the pictures throw away the but, but that's such a wonderful necklace burn it I was like well I'll just sell it and make money off of it give it to someone else no just simply throw it away if you were stopped drinking and you're still collecting those bottles of beer to just kind of show of where you've been and listen this is the very you've been and which very soon will be where you're gonna be you gotta throw the stuff out you gotta disconnect yourself completely from the things of the past and God says they've brought accursed things into the camp of Israel you gotta watch your life which things in your life are there that have been accursed one of the things that are accursed is things that are stolen God says they both stolen one of the things that have a curse on their life that we allow to live in our life is the things we shoplifted the things we've stolen actually this week you know FBI has declared if you're sharing your past with someone else other than your spouse it's a crime but don't worry they forgive Hillary they'll forgive yours as well <laughs> feel the burn <laughs> anyway don't get me into this <laughs> this might not be a good uh, we might lose the spirit right away <laughs> stolen when people steal things and they keep them in their house instead of returning them instead of returning them what they do is they actually bring a curse on the things in their house when you work in your job 
and we call them borrow things. Borrowing means I don't intend to bring it back, kind of a borrowing. Those kind of things, they bring curse. And we have to be very careful that we don't keep anything uh, people do now with video games, with movies. You know, the broke. And so they, they know that if you don't have money for it, you shouldn't be getting that. But, you know, we use torrents. And people begin to download those things and they say, well, you know, it's Hollywood. They're so wicked. They're so bad. You know, and I'm, I'm stealing from the bad people where you're as bad as them if you're stealing from them and stuff. So, and that stuff is stealing. And you say, well, it's just five, six bucks and everything. You don't want to have it. You already have enough of demons we're all fighting with. You don't need another one lurking in your house. Can somebody say amen? The things we steal are the things that become accursed. And God says, and deceived and deceived. Deceived is that the fact that Achan took all of this stuff, put it under his tent and somehow he thought it's not going to affect no one and he thought it will bring no consequences on his life. Deception is very huge. To bring cursed things into your life and think that it has no effect on someone or to allow sin to dwell, protect it and cover it in your life and think it has no effect on anyone. It's the same way as you're going into a mall and you have a, a vest, a suicide vest, and you think it won't hurt anyone. The only way a suicide vest can hurt no one is if no one is around you. If you have people around you that you care, if you have people around you that you love, the sins we tolerate, the sins we celebrate, the sins we hide, the hidden things that we justify, those things they blow up in our face and they hurt people closest to us. Amen. Why don't you write down these three notes, three, three points. The first one is that you can't have a support from God whose boundaries you have not honored. You cannot have a support from God whose boundaries you have not honored. Joshua said, God, why are you not helping us? God, we just got defeated. Where are you God? Why did you let this happen? And this is the question that I think every single person in our generation will come across with. And the question I have a feeling not once or twice you will ask in your life. God, where are you? Why did I just got defeated? Why in this thing that, you know, I was so confident and so sure that things will work out. But it didn't work out and it worked against me. And you know what Joshua does that, not realizing that when Joshua went to Jericho, he was waiting for the commander of the Lord's army to give instruction. But when Joshua went to the city, I, he just went on presumption, God is with him. When Joshua waited for Jericho's victory, he waited for divine help because Jericho was bigger than Joshua. But the city of Ai was smaller than Joshua. So Joshua went thinking that, hey, I got this. When they, before they went to Jericho, they sanctified themselves. Before they went to Ai, they went on presumption, everything is fine. Presumption can be a very dangerous thing. And a lot of people today, they live like this. They say, God, why have you let me be defeated? And God would ask you the question. You would say, God, where are you when I got smacked by this seed, by this people of I? And God says, I am in the same place you dumped me when you were in Jericho. When you pushed me to the side, I am still in the same place. Where is God when all of these things are happening in America? In the same place, we kicked him out. You can't blame God for something when you have not honored his boundaries. God supports and God shows support to people. That does not mean having God on your side. You won't have a battle. It just means you won't be defeated in the battle that you'll be fighting. You will always come on the top. Having God on your side does not mean that you won't have challenges. It just means that the enemy is going to be scared and you're going to be bold knowing you're not alone even if you're smaller. Having God on your side does not mean that always, always things will work out the way you wanted them to work out. But it means that you will have the last laugh and the enemy will be defeated. But when God is not showing up, when you're seeing defeat in your life, listen, pause. And you have to ask the question today. Not why is God not helping me? You have to ask the question, have I honored the boundaries? Am I even in a relationship with God? Because you can't expect Barack Obama to take you to the White House if you're not his child. But if you are his child, of course you're going to have those privileges. When people have a relationship with God, they expect certain things from the relationship with God. And the first challenge we have to ask is, have I honored his boundaries? If not, I have a chance to repent. I have a chance to change. I have a chance to bring it back. Point number two. You will always end up running from the devil if you have not been running from sin. Israel ran from the enemy. 
because they didn't run from their sin. We either will run from the devil or we will run from sin but we will run. You will either run from the devil or you will run from sin but you will run. Israel when they were now running from the devil they started to run from the enemy. God never created you to run from the devil. God never created you to run from challenges. God created you to face them and overcome them but the power to run the power to face the devil comes from your ability to run from his trap. Your ability to resist him is equal to your ability to flee all of the traps he sets for you. If you're lazy and if you're saying ah oh, man I just I just I don't think it's gonna hurt me and you allow all of these things in this world to come inside of you and you will say nah I'm not gonna run from the devil I'm not gonna look away I'm, I'm gonna take those things into my life you know this crazy church they think everything is from the devil you know I think everything is fine there's nothing wrong with it. When you allow all of this sin to come and hide under your tent one thing that they will it will kill you is this is that you will have no fight inside of you against the devil. A small little spookiness happens in your house and you pee in your pants. And you run. Why? Because the only people who can fight the devil are those who run from sin. Your ability to fight him is consistent with your ability to run. Not from him, from his sin. Amen. And when you run from sin, guess what happens? When the enemy comes and tries to do stuff in your house, tries to do stuff in your family, you rise up like a lion and you simply say not on my watch you begin to fight him and you're going to overcome i remember this particular time uh my uh we were living in the apartments same apartments where we have the yogi bear now it was our first year of marriage and uh, we were very committed a little bit broke couldn't afford a tv and internet and so we were living very holy and sanctified my wife i remember was painting was saturday night and then um we decided to go eat together we did everything together we walked together in apartments everything was just very close very romantic and as we were eating the living room of those apartments did not have lights and uh never really had a big fear of, of phobia of dark but at that time i just started to develop this phobia and i f have you ever had this like thing in the house where you felt like something is there yeah so I this wasn't just a feeling I mean my hair just would go up and I just looked and I was like felt like something was, is there and I was like whoa keep eating the soup brother keep eating so I'm looking at my soup and then you know reach out to my wife's hand holding tight she's thinking I'm being romantic she doesn't know I'm scared <laughs> in my own apartment and so we would go and to finish eating you know and I'm like literally chasing her like <laughs> every step where she's at I'm there because I'm scared of the dark and so we go into the room we had two bedroom apartment and so she's there painting and I remember preparing a sermon and the weird part is I'm preparing a sermon about how to defeat the devil <laughs> and I'm like a hypocrite because I'm scared of him scared of that whatever darkness or spookiness that's in the house and so as, as we is there and sometimes when when you're married uh, as a man you'll understand for no reason whether wife is pregnant or not pregnant she just gets this craving for no reason no, no explainable reason I want and then goes the either water juice or she's like I just just want water I was like well it's nine o'clock we, we shouldn't be like eating anything after nine she's like it's water I'm like we shouldn't be drinking after nine because we're going to use a lot of restroom and I'm over here trying to find an excuse not to go into the kitchen because going to the kitchen means I'll have to go through the living room and there's no lights in the living room and there's something there and it will kill me <laughs> she's like no please go get me water and I was like let's go together I'm like <laughs> I did a very important decision I want to be with you everywhere all the time and stuff even if that means going to the bathroom and going to the water and then I just felt so embarrassed okay I'll get you water so my first plan was this I'm gonna get out of the room I'll quickly run there in the kitchen turn on the lights I'll leave them on and then my wife will go turn them off before we go to sleep and I'll use the excuse that I got your water you turn off the lights we meet halfway and the moment I get out of the room and I remember studying about the victory over the devil and I feel this 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 strong conviction God says Vlad you, you gotta face that I was like what do you mean what do you mean face that that, that thing's gonna kill me <laughs> and, and the Holy Spirit just prompted he says don't turn on the light you are the light yeah I said who but when you're scared <laughs> and your living room doesn't have a light that's not who you're scared to death 
And I remember, I'm not making this up. I went into the middle of the living room. I'm scared. To, I literally felt like there's some kind of a, like a creeper somewhere there standing with the, like a knife and it's just going to cut me into pieces. I mean, you, you feel like you're going to die. That's it. You're no coming out of this. And I remember it like yesterday. I stood there and these words, I didn't meditate them. I didn't know what to know how come those, they came out. But this is what came out. This is my apartment. I pay the rent. Whatever this is, get out of it. That's all I said. Within about 30 seconds, just, just everything <laughs> vanished. Never turned on the lights and never had that experience happen again. And if something like that ever visits close to me or to you, you must understand one thing. This is your apartment. And that place, that thing that has no legal right in your life. Stuff moving maybe, stuff or, you know, noise is happening. You got to get up. Where is that power? Where is that power comes from? When you run from the devil, when you run from sin, you don't have to run from the devil. When you run from sin, you can stand up to the devil, you can stand up to the voices, you can stand up to the nightmares and you can stand your ground. You say, but I'm smaller, I feel weak. It does not matter what you feel and how because big God is behind you and he's supporting your position. Can somebody say amen? I want you to write down the last thought. And the last thought is this, is that curse in the camp is empowered by accursed in the tent. A curse came upon the camp because it was empowered by the accursed things in the tent. See whatever you're hiding in the tent will empower demonic forces over your life. I heard a story of Derek Prince. Derek Prince was sharing once as he was struggling financially. He was a preacher. He, has, he had a house in Florida and he was traveling all around. He wrote a book called They Shall Expel Demons and is very known about deliverance and other topics and as he was traveling everywhere he was always had a really hard time with his finances at that particular time his parents passed away and there was an inheritance that he was fighting to receive and it was tied up and things were very hard and so as he was play, uh, praying in the living room he walked in the living room and noticed that he had this painting of a of dragons this painting was passed on to him by his grandfather who was in China fighting some kind of a war or helping some kind of a military mission and that painting was passed on from some other Chinese villages so it was very classic and a very precious and very expensive painting and as he's watching the painting of dragons the Holy Spirit reminds him of the verse in the Bible where the dragons are not of God he's like but Lord this is from my father who cares if it's not from God this is precious it's from China. It's expensive. And the Holy Spirit prompts him to say, hey, you, you're a man of God. You shouldn't be having dragons looking over your living room. So he decided to obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. He took the painting of dragons and he just, just, just destroyed it. People thought he was crazy. But the interesting part is within a very short time, the inheritance that was tied up was released. His, his relationship with his wife changed. And he says within 12 something months, his income first doubled and then quadrupled. That he was able to afford an expensive house in Jerusalem and immigrated eventually to Jerusalem. And he says completely things changed. I remember hearing a story, Carl Fox. He went to Romania and he started to minister there and there was one man, he was a gypsy descent. He had a daughter who was five years of age. And for the last two years his daughter had this uncontrollable crying. They, because uh, this guy in Romania, he was part of the government. He had access to the best hospitals and psychologists and, psych and all of those, those places. He took his daughter to those best places. They gave her medicine. Nothing would work. And for two years, this daughter was uncontrollably crying. crying. This American pastor came into his house and he says, can I pray for her? And God right away gave him a word of knowledge. And he says, there's a curse on the house and the family. He started to pray for her and he says, I just... I just break the curse in Jesus mighty name and the girl stops crying and in an instant in the living room there is this vase that was given from gypsies that had like all kinds of you know good luck charms that thing quickly just shattered around the house and that's what the grandma who was Christian she's like pastor keep praying I want every devil to shatter I want every bad thing to shatter even if the whole house is gonna shatter keep praying I remember talking to one young lady who had a big big back problem with dreams constant nightmares and attacks and we came to her house to pray for her and uh, when I came into her house and I at that time I never knew what dream catches were and so and I was like wow what is this spider web that you have uh, over your over your uh, lamp she's like oh that's not a spider web that's a that's a charm and that, that's a, I bought this at the gas station it's supposed to help to catch bad dreams I'm okay homegirl <laughs> this is definitely not helping huh She's like, no, no, actually, now you're bringing it up. Actually, all the bad dreams started since I brought that. 
and so we prayed we threw that away and those things ended and these things have an access the devil can have an access over your camp if you allow our cursed things in your tent now you can we can debate today Harry Potter books Halloween things mass we can debate of oh, those horror books we can debate little Buddha Hindu monkey I know even our president showed during his interview how he carries little little things from Buddhism from Hinduism from uh, poker things and in the cross a lot of charms and we can in our culture we're tolerant and I believe we're supposed to be tolerant toward people we have to love people and understand but we're spiritual people we're not stupid if you allow demonic things in your life don't be surprised if there will be demonic powers operating against your life. Get rid of those things. But there's, they look so nice. That's why the devil uses them to look so nice. So he can trap you in them. Throw them out for the sake of your blessing. For the sake of your prosperity. For the sake of your success. For the sake of your future blessing in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen?